Exchange traded funds are an extremely popular way of getting exposure to markets. They're even bigger than hedge funds now, but there are some drawbacks. In this video, we look at five of those drawbacks in quite a lot of detail. Now I have to say, I love ETFs myself as a long-term passive investor, but it does pay to be aware of these risks. If you look at the assets under management, that's a total amount of cash that's been poured into the exchange traded fund market. It's now well above $4 billion. In fact, the rapid flow of capital into exchange traded funds has worried some regulators. The US regulator, the SEC, is looking into whether these massive flows are actually destabilizing markets. So in fact, the success of the market and its growth may itself be a problem. Now, exchange traded funds just track indices, but of course those indices change over time. Stocks move into an index and fall out of an index all the time. If you look at the FTSE website, you can actually see the individual stocks falling in and out of the index. And if you look at another index provider, like Standard & Poor's, you'll see a similar thing on their website. Why is this a problem for ETFs? Well, if you're continually buying and selling stocks, you have to cross something called the bid offer spread and you lose money in every trade. Exchange traded fund managers have to cross that bid offer spread all the time as they track the index. They don't have a choice and that itself incurs a cost. On the other hand, active fund managers don't have to track an index so closely and this means they have a bit more leeway to reduce their trading costs. So this is a problem for exchange traded funds or any kind of tracker fund. Now, when there's a crisis in markets, people usually stampede out of an asset class. So at the beginning of 2016, there was a big slide in the credit market and the junk bond exchange traded funds which track that market also saw lots of investors leave. And as we'll see, that causes a problem for the exchange traded fund manager. Here's the value of the JNK fund. That's one of the junk bond trackers in the United States. And the arrow shows that big sell off at the beginning of 2016. So what happens during this sell-off? Firstly, bond prices fall. Then the owners of those credit ETFs sell their holding in the fund. That means that the fund manager has to sell bonds. In turn, that reduces the price of the bonds. So we've created this negative spiral. This is why some people think that ETFs themselves exacerbate these sell-offs and increase market instability. Funds are created and funds close. In fact, 2016 was a record year for fund closures. This isn't the end of the world if you own an ETF, it's just inconvenient. You've got two choices. Either you wait until the fund is wound down or you can sell before the last trading date. You're probably best getting financial advice on which way to go. And if you want to see whether your fund is likely to close, this ETF Death Watch page is particularly interesting. ETFs might also hide currency risk. Here's an example of the yen weakening in 2013. When the yen weakens, the export-heavy Japanese equity indices benefit because their export profits are boosted. And if you look at the FTSE Japan index, there was a red-hot rally of about 70% as a result. I've shown two ETFs here that track the Japanese MSCI index, which is a Japanese equity index. The top fund is not hedged. In other words, you get full exposure to the fluctuations of the Japanese yen versus sterling. That index only gained 50%. The middle panel shows you a hedged index, which removes the effect of the currency, and that rose by 80%. So even though the currency weakened, you would have lost some of the benefits if you hadn't removed the currency effect. So always check whether an exchange traded fund is currency hedged or not, if you're buying exposure to foreign markets. Now the dotted line shows you the effect of Brexit, and in that case you would have benefited from the weakening of sterling. So the hedge can either help you or go against you, depending on what happens to the currency. Liquidity can be a problem for exchange traded funds. With any fund, investors pool their capital together and a fund manager buys assets on their behalf. In this example, the assets are all corporate bonds, which may have little liquidity. In other words, it's very hard to buy them and sell them in a crisis. Remember the example of JNK that we saw before. Now this has flawed the fund manager. Why is that? Well, it only takes one of the investors 10 seconds to sell their ETF because those are very liquid. They trade just like stocks on the stock market. 
But in a crisis, it may take much longer than 10 seconds. It may take days to sell a high yield corporate bond. This lack of liquidity can mean a disconnect between the value of the fund and the level of the market that is tracking. So be aware of this mismatch in liquidity between the underlying assets in the fund and the fund itself. The last risk is for leveraged funds. Instead of tracking an index directly, they generate two times the daily return of the index, or even three times the daily return. Now the critical thing is to understand that that doesn't track over the long term. So if the index rises by 10% over a year, a two times tracker will not rise by 20% over the same period. Let's see why. Let's say we've got the FTSE 100 and a two times tracker of the FTSE 100. On the first day, let's say they both start out at 100. Then the FTSE falls by 10%, so it falls from 100 to 90. The two times tracker has to fall 20%, so it falls to 80. The next day, the FTSE rises by 10%. The two times tracker rises by 20%. The arithmetic of returns means that the FTSE has risen back up to 99. It's lost 1%, but the two times tracker has lost 4%. Over the long term, there's a tracking error because the levered ETF is only matching the daily returns, which means that it doesn't track so well over the long term. Here I've shown the S&P 500 versus a two times tracker of the S&P 500. Over this period since 2007, the S&P 500 has risen by 88%. The two times tracker has risen by 135%. But notice that that's a lot less than two times the S&P 500 return. And that's because of this leakage effect that we just saw. Remember, this is not a recommendation. If you're thinking about investing in exchange traded funds, seek independent financial advice. If you've experienced one of these problems, we'd love to know about it. Tweet us at PensionCraft, message us on Facebook, and if you like these videos, subscribe to our channel.